What's good, YouTube? This video is going to be about two things that a lot of women need to stop doing. Not all of y'all, but a lot of y'all. Way too many of y'all. Anyway, the first thing that women need to stop doing is playing the victim. Playing the victim every time, all the time. If you look through my comment section, apparently there had never been a good man in ex existence. <laughs> apparently none of those women have ever done anything wrong to a guy. You almost never see any personal responsibility in the comment section. Love and respect to the women who share. And maybe it's within context, so I'm not trying to dismiss every comment, or a lot of the comments even. But just realize that there's always a thread. There's always a culture of blame on men, no matter what has happened in the relationship. No matter what's transpired, women inherently trust that everybody's telling the truth about every relationship scenario that they might spew about in the comment section. And they start to subconsciously program each other against the trust of men and against their experiences with better men. When you don't know the source, take the information with a grain of salt, because a lot of people are playing the victim. Sometimes you're the toxic one. You're the one that ruined the relationship. Sometimes you're the one that brought baggage. For instance, I keep meeting women who have no idea how to manage their anger or talk to grown ass men. And when the relationship fails, they just blame the men for not being strong enough to quote unquote handle them. When no one wants to be abused, no one wants to be talked down to, no man wants to be emasculated. This is the narrative of the good man that the good man isn't strong enough. When really the good man is wise and the good man is clearly re restraining himself. You'd be surprised how much strength and maturity it takes to remain calm in the face of a woman or a person having a child's tantrum. A lot of women with anger management issues and communication issues have killed their own relationships. But you wouldn't see that from the comment section. Apparently, there exists no bad woman. This is bullshit. People are flawed. Men are flawed. Women are flawed. Men cheat. Women cheat. Women ruin relationships and men clearly ruin relationships. But it's a human condition. It's not a male condition to be imperfect or to be flawed or to be disingenuous or to lie or to cheat or to steal or to use or to get over. As much as you might see it in media, every woman is not the victim of her relationship. Sometimes you're talking to the perpetrator. Sometimes you're just getting the story from the wrong person. If you're one of these women who seem to have the same experiences, no matter who you date, time in and time out, your relationships fail. When you actually get to relationships, they break up and there's hatred and there's uh, anger and strife between you and the partner. You're the common denominator in your relationships. You're not necessarily a victim. If you want a different result, you have to try something different. Give your relationships something that you've never given them. Maybe a new communication style. Maybe more focus. Maybe less abrasion. I don't know who needs to hear this, but somebody watching this needs to make some changes if they want a different result from their relationships. You, if I'm talking to you, are not always the victim. What have you done to hurt someone else? Ask yourself that. As a dating coach, if I'm speaking to a person and I don't hear the same level of self-reflection or self-awareness or responsibility as it pertains to what they contributed to their relationship that might not have helped it, I immediately know that in a lot of cases, you are bound to repeat your past relationship failures just with a different person. If you don't grow, if you don't evolve, if you don't learn the lessons, you are bound to repeat the test over and over and over again. Humans have this destructive nature to sometimes try to cover up their flaws and their mistakes and not admit them even to themselves. But this leads to unfavorable repeated cycles of the same failure. Until you're honest about what you've done and what you've contributed to your relationships, you have almost no chance. And this is usually true for all facets of life. If you refuse to learn the lesson or acknowledge the problem, you are bound to repeat the lesson. You've had 10 boyfriends. Was it really every guy's fault all the time? Like, think about this for a minute. In what world are you perfect and everybody else is flawed? We've all contributed something toxic or something negative to our relationship. And we have to take responsibility for that. Even me. Another thing that women need to stop doing is really stop listening to each other in an echo chamber of women exactly like you who have an exact experience. You don't learn if you just hang around people who have the same experience as you have. Sometimes we want to be validated so much that we only surround ourselves with people who agree with us or people who relate to us. But that's not how you grow and evolve and learn. 
As I've gotten older, I've taken a lot of pride in being the stupidest person in the room. But when I was younger, I liked to feel like the smartest person in the room. I wanted to feel like the go-to, but I realized that surrounding myself with people who knew less didn't grow me, and ultimately people would outgrow my shit. On the quest for knowledge or growth or love or relationships or happiness or joy or peace or contentment, evolution is more easily pushed by people who have different experiences, who know different things, who have a different type of wisdom. There's a quote somewhere uh, that says, everyone you meet is your superior in some way. And I'm not sure if superior is the right word, but it makes sense. You can learn something from anyone you encounter. Everybody has something to teach you. From the oldest of the old person to the youngest child, you can learn a lesson from someone. Someone somewhere knows more than you about something. This is always true. But sometimes surrounding yourself with people who only know what you know or who only have had the experience that you've had doesn't give you enough perspective and a wide enough spectrum of experience to make sound decisions or different types of decisions. Some of you aren't learning the lessons because your circle is a little bit too narrow. Get around different people, get around new wisdom. But when you get around experience, when you get around people who are cultured, uh, who have traveled, uh, who are just had different experiences because they made completely different choices, who've had different results, you get a much more accurate picture of the possibilities of life and love. Stop exclusively hanging around and talking to women who've had the same fuckboy experiences. Stop going to the internet corners who only cater to your experience. Start learning about the things that other people are experiencing through other habits and practices. Get out of the pissed off man-hating comment section sometimes and just go experience. Go apply some of the advice that you watch on these hundreds of YouTube videos and have a different experience. A lot of people suffer from stinking thinking. And if they're tainted in the same way you're tainted, you can't get much from their conversation. So find someone who's had a different experience and pick their brain about something. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. Unless you just want to be validated and feel sorry for yourself, then continue just getting around people who've had the exact same experience you've had. But it won't lead to your goal. And until your actions are in alignment with your goal, you will continue to have the same failed relationships and experiences in life and love. There's this quote that says, you are the median of the five people that you spend the most time around. Who are you spending your time around? What type of knowledge are you spending your time around? What type of culture have you immersed yourself in? You are the average of your five biggest influences. Make sure those people are elevating you. Make sure those ideas, those comment sections, those YouTubers, those mentors, those uh, bosses, friends, co-workers are elevating you. That's the only way you stop the cycle. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Follow me at KVIC24 on Instagram. I get with y'all later.